Have you ever wondered how a small country managed to develop one of the most impressive military vehicles of its time, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in the world? In this video, we're going to take you through the fascinating story of the M80 Infantry Fighting Vehicle, a vehicle that was not only a symbol of Yugoslav engineering but also played a crucial role in the country's defense. From its inception in the 1970s to its widespread use across several countries after the breakup of Yugoslavia, the M80 is more than just a machine, it's a story of innovation, ambition, and survival. Stick with us, because by the end of this video, you'll discover why the M80 is still a legend today. It all started in 1969, when Yugoslavia, a country nestled in the heart of Europe, realized it needed to modernize its military. The world was changing fast, and with the rising tension of the Cold War, it became clear that relying on foreign equipment was no longer an option. The solution? Build something of their own, something that could rival the best in the world. Yugoslavia, despite being a smaller nation, had a long tradition of engineering excellence. Its military industrial base was solid, and in the 1970s, it embarked on a bold mission to create its own infantry fighting vehicle, IFV. This would be a machine that could carry soldiers into battle, support them with heavy firepower, and protect them with the latest armor. The design would be entirely indigenous, though not without some influence from the Soviet Union's BMP series of vehicles, which had become widely regarded as the standard in IFVs. By 1974, a prototype of the M80 was completed, and after rigorous testing and fine-tuning, the vehicle was officially adopted in 1982 under the designation M80. This wasn't just another vehicle, it was a vision of a powerful, mobile and well-protected force on the battlefield. In total, 835 units would be built over the course of the 1980s and early 1990s, with different versions created to fulfill specific roles. The M80 was designed for a crew of three, the driver, the commander, and the gunner. The driver sat on the front left, the commander was seated behind them, and the gunner was in charge of the turret, which housed a 20mm M55 autocannon as the primary weapon. This gave the vehicle a formidable edge in battle, capable of taking out infantry, light vehicles, and even armored targets. It also carried two anti-tank guided missiles, ATGMs, giving it the ability to engage enemy tanks from a distance. But the real magic of the M80 was in its design. The six infantrymen seated in the back were ready for action at any moment. The rear of the vehicle had a double-door arrangement that allowed soldiers to disembark quickly, even under fire. They could immediately engage enemy infantry using the firing ports along the sides. It was the perfect combination of firepower and mobility. Now, the armor of the M80 was no less impressive. Built with a combination of aluminum and titanium, the vehicle could withstand most small arms fire and shrapnel. It also featured a nuclear, biological, and chemical NBC protection suite, meaning that the crew could survive in the most toxic environments, should the need arise. The vehicle even had its own fire suppression system, which was crucial for preventing onboard fires after a direct hit. For mobility, the M80 relied on a 320 horsepower diesel engine produced by Daimler Benz. This gave the vehicle impressive speed, up to 65 km per hour on roads and a range of 500 km. But what really set the M80 apart was its amphibious capability. The vehicle could ford rivers and other bodies of water, thanks to its tracks, which allowed it to move at a speed of 8 km per hour through the water. The M80 could also handle rough, off-road terrain with ease, thanks to its torsion bar suspension system. However, like any piece of military equipment, the M80 wasn't perfect, and the vehicle did go through several upgrades to improve its performance. The first version of the M80, equipped with a French engine producing only 260 horsepower, was deemed underpowered. It quickly became clear that an upgrade was necessary. In 1983, the M80A was introduced, featuring the much stronger Daimler Benz 320 horsepower engine. This new engine gave the M80 the power it needed to compete with other modern IFVs. In addition to the improved engine, several variants of the M80 were created for different roles. For instance, the M80A KC and M80A KB were command vehicles equipped with extra communication gear. The M80A LT was an anti tank missile carrier capable of launching six at three Sager missiles, while the M80A SN was converted into an armored ambulance to carry injured soldiers off the battlefield. The M80AK, also known as the M98A, was the most modern version, equipped with a powerful 30mm M86 autocannon and capable of engaging targets more effectively than its predecessors. 
One of the most interesting developments came when the M-80 was considered for use in air defense. Prototypes like the M-80A1 were equipped with two 30mm autocannons, making them capable of engaging aerial targets. Meanwhile, the Sava M-90 prototype mounted SA-13 surface-to-air missiles, SAMs, to defend against enemy aircraft. These air defense variants, though not widely produced, showcased the M-80's potential versatility in different combat scenarios. After the dissolution of Yugoslavia in 1992, the M-80 found new life in the armed forces of the newly formed countries, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Serbia remains the largest operator, with 550 minutes and minus 80 seconds still in service. The vehicle continues to serve as a reliable and powerful tool for these nations' defense forces, proving that the M-80's legacy extends far beyond its original design. So there you have it, the story of the M-80 infantry fighting vehicle. A vehicle born from the ingenuity of a nation that had the vision to create something truly remarkable. It's not just a machine, it's a symbol of how determination and innovation can overcome even the greatest of challenges. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the history of the M80 and its fascinating legacy, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Make sure to hit that like button if you learned something new today, and leave a comment below to share your thoughts. Do you think there's another military vehicle with a more interesting story? Let us know. And stay tuned for more captivating stories from the world of military history. Thank you for watching.